Well, discharging this delicate office, I saw Yum Yum. We loved each other at once. But she was betrothed to Coco, her guardian, a, a cheap tailor. And I saw that my suit was hopeless. Overwhelmed with despair, I quit the town. Judge of my delight when I learned a month ago that Coco had been condemned to death for flirting. I hurried back in the hope that Yum Yum was at liberty to listen to my protestations. It is true that Coco was condemned to death for flirting, but he was reprieved at the last moment and raised to the exalted rank of Lord High Executioner under the following remarkable circumstances. <laughs> Do you 
desire not unhesitating may accept all their posts at once. And the salaries attached to them. Uh, you did. It is consequently my degrading duty to serve this upstart as First Lord the Treasury, Lord Chief Justice, Commander in Chief, Lord High Admiral, Master of the Buckhound, Groom of the Backstairs, Archbishop of Titipu and Lord Mayor, both acting and elect, all rolled into one, and at a salary, a pool bar paid for his services. Oh, a salaried minion. But if I do it, it revolts me, but I do it. And it does you credit. But I don't stop at that. I go and dine with middle-class people on reasonable terms. I dance at cheap suburban parties for a moderate fee. I accept refreshments from any hand, however lowly. I also retail state secrets at a very low figure. <laughs> for instance, any further information about Yum Yum would come under the head of a state secret. Another insult, and I think a light one. <laughs> to be as you
I shall ensure a continuance of those favours it will ever be my study to deserve. If I should ever be called upon to act professionally, I am happy to think that there will be no difficulty in finding plenty of people whose loss would be a distinct gain to society at large. <laughs> Someday it may happen that a victim must be found. I've got a little list, I've got a little list of society offenders who might well be underground and who never would be missed, who never would be missed. There's lager louts and litter bus, their parents who I blame, and hooligans who go to every English football game. There's yuppies from the city with their dreadful philo facts, and gutter press reporters known collectively as hacks. And doctors who on running late in surgery insist they never would be missed. They never would be missed. He's got them on the list. He's got them on the list. And there's not a plenty missed. They are none of them be missed. There's the job whose ghetto blast that plays too loud with too much bass. And the keyboard organist. I've got him on the list. The person who smokes cigarettes and puffs it in your face. He never would be missed. He never would be missed. There's the amateur producer who just thinks he's very grand. The musical director and his tin-pot little band. The stage crew and the lighting men who just come for the beer. The sound man's had too much to drink and that's why you can't hear. But the extroverts who go on stage, I think I could resist. I'll cross them off my list. I'll cross them off my list. Yes, yes cross them off the list. Yes, Ross is on the list, but I feel that they'll be missed. I'm sure that we'll be missed. Bias Newsome, too, just now is rather right. The gay judicialist, I've got him on the list. Inventors of the poll tax must expect to lose their life, because I've got them on my list. I've got them on my list. They're those self-important statesmen who I think we all despise. The NHS is safe with us. I've never had such lies. <laughs> and Kukuk and Mrs. Tur and also Doctor Who. <laughs> the task of filling out the blanks I'd rather leave to you. For it really doesn't matter who you put up on the list. Then none of them be meant. Then none of them be missed. You may put them on the list. You may put them on the list. But there's none of them be missed. They're none of them be missed. Poor bar, it appears that the festivities in connection with my forthcoming marriage must last a week. I 
should like to do it handsomely, and I should like to consult you as to the amount I ought to spend upon them. Certainly. In which of my capacity? As First Lord of the Treasury, Lord Chamberlain, Attorney General, Chancellor of the Exchequer, Privy Purse, or Private Secretary? Shall we say as Private Secretary? Speaking as your Private Secretary, I should say that as the city will have to pay for it, don't stint yourself, do it well. Exactly, as the city will have to pay for it. That is your advice, then. As Private Secretary, of course, you will understand that as Chancellor of the Exchequer, I am bound to see that due economy is observed. Oh, but just now you said, don't stint yourself, do it well. As Private Secretary. And now you are saying, due economy must be observed. As Chancellor of the Exchequer. I see. Come over here where the Chancellor can't hear us. Now, as my solicitor, how would you advise me to deal with this little difficulty? Oh, as your solicitor. I should have no hesitation in saying, chance it. I will. If it were not. But as Lord Chief Justice, I am bound to see that the law is violated. I see. Come over here, where the Chief Justice can't hear us. Now, as First Lord of the Treasury. Mm, I could propose a special vote that would cover all expense, if it were not. But as leader of the opposition, I would be bound to resist it tooth and nail. Or, as paymaster general, I could so cook the accounts that as Lord High Auditor, I should never discover the fraud. But then, as Archbishop of Titipur, it would be my duty to denounce my dishonesty and give myself into my own custody as First Commissioner for Paris. It is all extremely awkward. I don't say that all these distinguished people couldn't be squared, but it is only right to tell you that they would not be sufficiently degraded in their own estimation unless they were insulted with a very considerable bribe. The matter shall have my careful attention. Ah, but my bride and her sisters approach. And any little compliment on your part, such as an abject grovel in characteristic Japanese attitude, would be esteemed a favor. No money, no grovel.
to love your ward, Yum Yum. Oh, I know I deserve your anger. Anger? Uh, not a bit of it, my boy. Why, I love her myself. Pretty little girl, isn't she? Nice eyes, bright hair, charming little thing altogether. Very glad to hear my opinion backed up by a competent authority. Thank you very much. Goodbye. Take him away, please. Uh, excuse me, but what is this? Customer come to try on? <laughs> that is a tremendous... Well, mm. oh, go away, little girl. Can't talk to little girls like you. Go away there, dear. Pooba, allow me to present you. These are my three wards. The one in the middle is my bride elect. What do you want me to do to them? Mind, I will not kiss them. No, you will not kiss them. A little bow, a mere nothing. You needn't mean it, you know. It goes against the grain. They're not young ladies, they're young persons. Come, come. Make an effort. There's a good nobleman. Well, I shan't mean it. <coughs> How did you, little girl? Oh, oh my protoplasmal ancestor. That's very good. I see nothing to laugh at. It's very painful for me to have to say, How did you, little girl? How did you, young persons? I'm not in the habit of saying, How did you, little girls? How did you, to anybody under the rank of a Lanark doctor? <laughs> Don't mind him. He can't help it. He's under treatment for it. <laughs> you mustn't mind them. They don't understand the delicacy of your position. We know how delicate it is, don't we? We certainly do. How a nobleman of, of your importance can do it at all is something I never can, never shall understand. <sighs>
weeks in the belief that your guardian was beheaded. And I find you to be married to him this afternoon. Alas, yes. You do not love him. Alas, no. Modify it, much. Then why do you not refuse him? What good would that do? He's my guardian. And he wouldn't let me marry you. But I would wait until you were of age. You forget that in Japan, girls do not arrive at the years of discretion until they are 50. True. From 17 to 49, are considered years of indiscretion. Besides, a wandering minstrel who plays a wind instrument outside the tea houses is hardly a fitting husband for the ward of a Lord High Executioner. But <coughs> shall I tell her? Yes, she'll not betray me. What if it should prove that, after all, I am no musician? There, I was certain of it. Directly I heard you play. What if it should prove that I am none other than the son of His Majesty the Mikado? The son of the Mikado? But why is Your Highness disguised? And what has Your Highness done? And will Your Highness promise never to do it again? Some years ago, I had the misfortune to captivate Katisha, an elderly lady of my father's court. She misconstrued my customary affability into expressions of affection and claimed me in marriage under my father's law. My father, the Lucius Junius Brutus of his race, ordered me to marry her at once or perish ignominiously on the scaffold. That night, I fled his court and, assuming the disguise of a second trombone, I joined the band, where I had the happiness of seeing you. If you please, I think Your Highness had better not come too near. The laws against flirting are excessively severe. But we're all alone. There's no one to you. Ah, uh, still, that doesn't make it right. To flirt is capital. It is capital. Uh, and we must obey the law. Oh, just take the law. I wish it would. But it won't. If it were not for that, think how happy we might be. Happy indeed. If it were not for the law, we should be sitting side by side like that. Instead of being obliged to sit half a mile off, like that. If it were not for that, we should be gazing into each other's eyes like that. Breathing sighs of unutterable love. Oh, mm. Like that. With our arms round each other's waists, like that. Yes, if it wasn't for the law. If it wasn't for the law. As it is, of course, we couldn't do anything of the kind. Not for worlds. Being engaged to Coco, you know. Being engaged to Coco.
income entirely my future happiness is wrapped up in that little party. Why, it hardly seems worthwhile. Oh, matrimony. Oh. Now then, what is it? Can't you see I'm soliloquizing? You have interrupted an apostrophe, sir. I am the bearer of a letter from His Majesty, the Mikado. Oh, a letter from the Mikado? What in the world can he have to say to me? Oh. Here it is at last. I thought it would come sooner or later. The Mikado is struck by the fact that no executions have taken place in Titipu for a year and decrees that unless somebody is beheaded within a month, the post of Lord High Executioner will be abolished and the city reduced to the rank of a village. But that will involve us all in irretrievable ruin. Yes. There is nothing for it. I shall have to execute somebody at once. The only question is, who shall it be? Well, it seems unkind to say so, but as you're already under sentence of death for flirting, everything seems to point to you. To me? What are you talking about? I can't execute myself. Why not? Well, because in the first place, self-decapitation is an extremely difficult, not to say dangerous, thing to attempt. And in the second place, it's suicide, and suicide is a capital offence. That is so, no doubt. We might reserve that point. True, it could be argued six months hence before the full court. Besides, I don't see how a man can cut off his own head. A man might try. Even if you only succeeded in cutting it <coughs> half off, that would be something. It would be taken as an earnest of your desire to comply with the imperial will. No, no, pardon me, but there I am, Adamus. As official headsman, my reputation is at stake, and I cannot consent to embark upon any professional undertaking unless I can see my way to a successful result. Hmm. This professional conscientiousness is highly creditable to you, but it places us in a very awkward position. My dear sir, awkwardness of your position is great itself compared to that of a man engaged in the act of cutting off his own head. I'm afraid that unless you can obtain a substitute? <laughs> substitute? Oh. Why, nothing easier. <laughs> Puba, I appoint you Lord High Substitute. <laughs> I should be delighted. That an appointment would realize my fondest dream. But no, at any sacrifice, I must set bounds to my insatiable ambition. <laughs> I'm 
dark clock in a pestilential prison with a lifelong lock. Awaiting the sensation of a short, sharp shock from a cheap and chippy copper on a big black clock. To sit in solemn silence in a dull, dark dock in a pestilential prison with a lifelong lock. Awaiting the sensation of a short, sharp shock from a cheap and chippy copper on a big black clock. A dull, dark clock, a lifelong lock, a short, sharp shock, a big black clock.
ask you what you mean to do. We pumped you near up here. Congratulate me, gentlemen. I found a volunteer. Yeah. <laughs> 
you shall rule. In vain for mercy, on your knees you sue. I'll tear the mock from your disguising. Now comes the blow. Prepare yourself for new surprising. How far my foe? No, minstrel, he, despite bravado.
In my artless Japanese way. <gasps> Why, it is that I'm so much more attractive than anybody else in the whole world. Can this be vanity? No. Nature is lovely and rejoices in her loveliness. I am a child of nature and take after my mother.
30 years of my happiness before us. And at that rate, this interview has already lasted four hours and three quarters. Yes, how time flies when we're in silence. Oh, that's the way to look at it. Don't let me upset. Oh. Remember, there's a silver lining to every cloud. Yes. Your arm around her waist. There, let me get used to that first. 
Well, would you like to retire? It must pain you to see us so affectionate together. No, no, I must learn to bear it. Now, oblige me by allowing her head to rest upon your shoulder. Like that? Oh, I'm much obliged. <laughs> now, kiss her. <gasps> Thank you. Simple torture. Oh, come, come. Bear up, after all, it's only for a month. No, it's no use deluding oneself with false hopes. What do you mean? Oh, my child, my poor child. How shall I break it to her? My little bride was to her feet. Was to her feet? Yes. You can never be mine. <laughs> I have just ascertained that by the Mikado's law, when a married man is beheaded, his wife is buried alive. Buried alive? alive. Yes, buried alive. A most unpleasant death. Who did you get that from? Oh, from Booba. He's my solicitor. Oh, but he must have been mistaken. So I thought. And so I asked the Attorney General, the Lord Chief Justice, the Master of the Rolls, the Judge Ordinary, and the Lord Chancellor, they were all of the same opinion. I've had such unanimity on a point of law in my life. But stop a bit. That law has never been put in force. Not yet. You see, flirting is the only crime punishable by decapitation, and married men don't flirt. Oh, of course. I quite forgot that. Well, it would seem that my dream of happiness is at an end. Darling, I don't want to be selfish, and I love you with all my heart. I'm sure I should never love anybody as it half as much, but when I agreed to marry you, my own, I had no idea that, that I would have to be buried alive in a month. It's all right. It's the very first I've heard of it. It does make a difference, of course. You see, burial alive is such a stuffy death. I call it a beast of a death. You see my difficulties, don't you? Yes, and I see my own. If I insisted you carrying out your promise, I'd doom you to a hideous death. And if I released you from it, you marry Coco at once. Thanks, old chap. I am sure you are. You see, I'm quite helpless. I quite see that. I can't conceive of anything more miserable than to have one's marriage postponed at the last moment. But you shan't be disappointed of a wedding. You shall come to mine. Oh, thanks very much. But I'm afraid that is impossible. By so? Today I die. What do you mean? I can't live without Yum Yum. This afternoon I perform the happy dispatch. No, no, pardon me. I can't allow that. Why not? Well, hang it all. You're under contract to die by the hands of the public executioner in a month's time. If you kill yourself, what's to become of me? Why, I shall
shall have to be executed in your place. It would certainly seem so. Now then, Lord Mayor, what is it? Well, the Cardinal and his suite are approaching the city and will be here in ten minutes. The Cardinal? He's come to find out if his orders have been carried out. Now look here, you know, this is getting serious. A bargain's a bargain, and you really mustn't frustrate the end of justice by committing suicide. As a man of honor and a gentleman, you are bound to die ignominiously by the hands of the public executioner. Very well, then, behead me. What? Now? Certainly at once. Chop it off! Chop it off! My good sir, I don't know about ready to execute gentlemen at a moment's notice. I, I can't even kill a blue bottle. Oh, but as Lord High Executioner. My good sir, as Lord High Executioner, I've got to go and behead him in a month's time. I'm not ready yet. I don't know how it's done. I mean to take lessons. I'm going to start with a guinea pig and work my way through the animal kingdom until I come to a second trombone. Why, you don't suppose that as a humane man I'd ever have accepted the post of Lord High Executioner if I hadn't thought that the duties were purely nominal? I can't kill him. I can't kill anybody. I can't kill anything. <laughs> oh, come, my poor fellow. We all have unpleasant duties to discharge from time to time. After all, what is it? If I don't mind, why should you? Remember that sooner or later, it must be done. Must it? I'm not so sure about that. What do you mean? Why should I kill you if making an affidavit that you have been killed will do just as well? There are plenty of witnesses. There's the Lord Chief Justice, uh, the uh, Lord High Admiral, the Commander-in-Chief, the First Lord of the Treasury, the Secretary of State for the Home Department, and the Chief Commissioner of Police. But where are they? They're all here. They'll all swear to it, won't you? Am I to understand that all us high officers of state are required to perjure ourselves to ensure your safety? Why not? You'll be grossly insulted, as usual. Will the insult be cashed down, or that be date? It'll be a ready-money transaction. Mm. Well, it will be a useful discipline. Very good. Choose your fiction, and I'll endorse it. Ha-ha, family pride. How do you like that, Madak? But life without Yum Yum. Oh, Yum Yum, Yum Yum, bother Yum Yum. Here, Commissioner, go and find Yum Yum. Now, take Yum Yum and marry Yum Yum. Oh, no, never come back here again. Ah, oh, here she is. Yum Yum, are you particularly busy? Not particularly. Do you have five minutes to spare? Yes. Then go along with his grace, the Archbishop of City Poo, and he will marry you at once. But it's have to be very... No well. question. Just do as I say, and Nancy Poo will explain everything. But one woman... Not in the world. Well, here comes the Mikado, no doubt to find out that his wishes have been carried out. And if he finds you alive, I shall have the greatest difficulty in explaining to him that I've beheaded you. Oh, just in time, for here he comes. Thank you. 
allowed to welcome your majesty. I guess the object of your majesty's visit. Your wishes have been attended to. The execution has taken place. Oh, you've had an execution, have you? Yes, the coroner has just handed me his certificate. I am the coroner, and this is a certificate of his death. At Titipu, in the presence of the Lord Chancellor, Lord Chief Justice, Attorney General, Lord Mayor, Secretary of State for the Home Department, and Chairman of Lanark Community Council. <laughs> they were all present, Your Majesty. I counted them myself. A very good house. I wish I'd been in time for the performance. Oh, a tough fellow he was, too. A man of gigantic strength. His struggles were terrific. It was really a remarkable scene. Describe it. The criminal cried as he dropped him down in a state of wild alarm. With a frightful, frantic, fearful frown, I bared my big right arm. I seized him by his little pigtail, and to the ground fell he. As he squirmed and struggled and gurgled and goggled, I drew my snicker sneeze. My oh, never shall I forget the cry or the shriek that shriek. As I gnashed my teeth and from its sheath, I drew my snake a sneak. We know him well, he had a hair or two around the tail. He always tries to watch a light, and every time he fails. He shivered and shook as he gave a sign, the stroke he did and did His eye met mine, and it seemed to grace his nerves. But he nodded his head and kissed his hands, and whistled a little bit And the same true cut cleanly through, and so be When a man the fate of a beautiful maid is a cheering sight to see. And it's oh, I'm glad that all this bread was soon by sight of me. Her terrible tale you can't compare with truth is quite a dream. Her teeth exact for all the sight amount to our disease. Now all you have said I should like to have seen it, but we came about a totally different matter. A year ago, my son's 
the heir to the throne of the Japan, bolted from our imperial court. Indeed. Had he any reason to be dissatisfied with his position? None whatever. On the contrary, I was going to marry him. Yet he fled. I am surprised that he should have fled from one so lovely. That's not true. No. <laughs> you hold that I am not beautiful because my face is plain. But you know nothing. You are still unenlightened. Learn then that it is not on the face alone that beauty is to be sought. My face is unattractive. It is. But I have a left shoulder blade that is a miracle of loveliness. People come miles to see it. My right elbow has a fascination that few can resist. Allow me. Yeah, this is on due Tuesdays and Fridays on presentation of visiting card. Yes, for my circulation, it is the largest in the world. And yet he fled. And is now masquerading in this town, disguised as a second trombone. A second a trombone? trombone? Yes. Would it be troubling you too much if I asked you to produce him? He goes by the name of... Nan Kipu. Nan Kipu. Oh, that would be uh, quite easy. Uh, that is, it would be rather difficult. In point of fact, uh, he's gone abroad. Gone abroad? His address? Uh, Carlo. What's the matter? See here his name, Nanki Poo, beheaded this morning. Uh, oh, where shall I find another? Uh, where shall I find another? Uh, oh. Dear, 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 this is very tiresome. My poor fellow, in your anxiety to carry out my wishes, you have beheaded the heir to the throne of Japan. Uh, I thank to offer your majesty an unqualified apology. I desire to associate myself with that expression of regret. Yes. You really had the least notion. Of course you hadn't. How could you? Come, come, my poor fellow, don't distress yourself. It was no fault of yours. If a man of exalted rank chooses to disguise himself as a second trombone, he must take the consequences. It really distresses me to see you take on so. I have no doubt he thoroughly deserved all he got. We are infinitely obliged to your majesty. Much obliged, your majesty. Very much obliged, your majesty. Obliged? Not a bit. Don't mention it. How could you tell? No, of course, we couldn't tell who the gentleman really was. It wasn't written on his forehead, you know. It might have been written on his pocket handkerchief, but, but um, Japanese don't wear pocket handkerchiefs. <laughs> <laughs> I forget the punishment for compassing the death of the heir apparent. Punishment? Yes, something lingering with boiling oil oh. in it, I fancy. Something of that sort. I think boiling oil occurs in it, but I'm not sure. I know it's something humorous, but lingering. Come, come, don't fret. I'm not the least bit angry. Uh, if your majesty will accept our uh, assurances, we had no idea. Of course. I knew nothing about it. I wasn't there. <laughs> That's the pathetic part of it. Unfortunately, the full of an act says, compassing the death of the heir apparent. There's not a word about a mistake. No. Or not knowing. No. Or having no notion. No. Or not being there. No. There should be, of course. Yes. yes. But there isn't. No. Oh. That's the slovenly way in which these acts are always drawn. But never mind. Cheer up. I'll have it altered. Oh. Next session. Oh. Now, about your execution. Would after luncheon suit. Can you wait till then? Oh, oh yes. yes, we can, can wait, wait till then. then. Then we'll make it after luncheon. I don't want any lunch. I'm really very sorry for you all, but it's an unjust one, and virtues triumphant only in theatrical performances. <laughs> See how the fates there gives a lot for A. Happy B is not, yet B is worthy, I dare say, of more prosperity than A. Is B more worthy? I should say. 
say he's worth a great deal more than it. Yes, it is happy, oh, so happy, laughing, ha, ha, chopping, ha, ha, record, whopping, ha, 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 ever joyous, ever gay, happy, undeserving, she will insist on my execution. And if I am executed, my wife will have to be buried alive. You see our difficulty. Yes. I don't know what's to be done. There's one chance for you, though. If you could persuade Katisha to marry you, <laughs> then she would have no further claim on me, and I could come alive without any fear of being put to death. I? Marry Katisha? I really think that's the only course. My dear girl, have you seen her? She's something appalling. Ah, that's only her face. She has a left elbow, which people come from miles to see. I'm told that her right heel is much admired by connoisseurs. My good sir, I decline to pin my heart upon any lady's right heel. It comes to this. While Katisha is single, I prefer to be a disembodied spirit. <laughs> but when Katisha is married, Existence will be as welcome as the flowers in spring. The flowers that bloom in the spring, tra la free promise of merry sunshine. As we merrily dance and we sing, tra la we welcome the hope that they bring, tra la for the summer of roses and wine. Oh, the summer of roses and wine. And that's what we mean when we say that the thing is welcome as flowers that bloom in the spring. Tra la 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 
flowers that bloom in the spring, Trella, have nothing to do with the king. I've got to take under my wing, Trella, a most unattractive thing, Trella, with a caricature of a face, with a caricature of a face. And that's what I mean when I say or I sing. But vengeance pursues. They are heating the cauldron. Kadisha, behold a suppliant at your feet. Kadisha, mercy. Mercy? Have you mercy on him? See here, you. You have slain my love. He did not love me, but he would have loved me in time. I am an acquired taste. <laughs> Only the educated palate can appreciate me. I was educating his palate when he left me. Well, he's dead. Where shall I find another? It takes years to train a man to love me. Am I to begin the weary round again, and at the same time implore mercy for you who robbed me of my prey? I mean my pupil. Just as his education was on the point of completion, oh, where shall I find another? Here. What? Katisha, for years I have loved you with a white hot passion that is slowly but surely consuming my very vitals. Ah, <laughs> oh, shrink not from me. If there be aught of a woman's mercy in your heart, turn not away from a love 
plastic suppliant whose every fibre thrills at your tiniest touch. True it is that under a poor mask of disgust I have endeavoured to conceal a passion whose inner fires are boiling the oil, are uh, boiling the soul within me. But the fire will not be smothered. It defies all attempts at extinction and breaking forth all the more eagerly for its long restraint declares itself in words that will not be weighed that cannot be schooled, that should not be too severely criticized. Katisha, I dare not hope for your love, but I will not live without it. Darling! Go, go, you whose hands still reek with the blood of my betrothed, dare to address words of passion to the woman you have so foully wronged. I do. Accept my love or I perish on the spot. Go to. Who knows as well as I that no one ever yet died of a broken heart? You know not what you say. This. On a tree by a river, a little tongue-tin sang willow, sing willow, sing willow. And I said to him, Dicky Bird, why do you sit singing willow, sit willow, sit willow? Is it weakness of intellect, birdie, I cry, or a rather tough worm in your little inside? With a shake of his poor little head, Willow, sit willow, sit willow. He sobbed and he sighed as he sat on that bough, singing willow, sit willow, sit willow. And a cold perspiration bespangled his brow. Oh, willow, sit willow. He slapped at his chest and a gurgle he gave. Then he thrust himself into the billowy wave. And an echo arose from the poet's eyes. Oh, willow, it willow, it willow. Just as sure as I'm sure that my name isn't Willow, Tit Willow, Tit Willow. That was blighted affection that made him exclaim, Oh Willow, Tit Willow, Tit Willow. And if you remain callous and obdurate, I shall perish as he did. And you will know why. Though I probably shall not exclaim as I die. Oh, willow, did willow, did willow. in blood, sir. Oh, my idea, exactly. Yes. 
There is beauty in the bell of the blast. There is grandeur in the growling of the gale. There is ever quicker pouring when the lions are the roaring and the tiger is the lashing of the tail. Yes, we like to see the tiger from the Congo or the Niger and especially with the lashing of his tail. Bottle tails have the splendor that is grim and earthquakes only terrify the dome. But to him with that simplistic, there is nothing that's terrific in the falling of a flight of thunderbolts. Him, I thought, one more meekness if I have it's the passion for a flight of thunderbolts. It's such a stone thing that our day is present very outtakes our wife. Oh, where we'll go and merrily marry, no time we carry till day is done. There is beauty in extreme old age. Do you fancy you are elderly enough? Information I'm requesting on the subject interesting is the maiden all the better when she's tough. True, not to my dominion, it's the general opinion that she lasts a good deal longer when she's tough. Are you old enough to marry, do you think? Don't you wait until you're 80 in the shade? There's a fascination frantic in the ruin that's romantic. Do you think you are sufficiently decayed? Well, on matter that you mention, I have given some attention, and I think I am sufficiently decayed. and we're quite ready. Have all the painful preparations been made? Your Majesty, all is prepared. Then produce the unfortunate gentleman and his two well-meaning but misguided accomplices. Oh, oh, mercy, mercy for Coco, mercy for Pitty Singh, mercy even for Pooba. I beg your pardon. I don't think I quite caught that remark. Mercy even for Poobah. <laughs> Mercy, my husband that was to have been is dead. And I have just married this miserable object. You have not been long about it. Uh, we were married before the registrar. I am the registrar. <laughs> I see. But my difficulty is that as you have slain the heir apparent, See, the apparent is mostly. Bless my heart, my son. And your daughter-in-law, Electra. Ah, traitor, you have deceived me. Yes, I think you're entitled to a little explanation, but I'm sure he will give it better hold than in pieces. Uh, your Majesty, it's like this. Uh, it is true that I had affected, that I had killed Nanki Poo, and... Yes, with most affecting particulars. Merely corroborative detail intended to give artistic... Will you ever refrain from putting in your own narrative? It's like this. When Your Majesty says, let a thing be done, it's as good as done. Practically, it is done. Because Your Majesty's word is law. Your Majesty says, kill a gentleman, and the gentleman is told off to be killed. Consequently, that gentleman is as good as dead. Practically, he is dead. And if he is dead, well, why not say so? I see. Nothing could possibly be more satisfactory. Thank you. 